Hereditary is being called the scariest film since The Exorcist, and a big part of that is its fixation on flesh and blood. No, not that kind. I'm talking about family. From The Shining to sinister, family-focused horror films are cut above in terms of terror. But what makes them so much scarier than your typical slasher? I'm Andrew, and today I want to explore three reasons why family equals fear. Reason one, families are sympathetic. As you can probably tell from our How to Kill series, we're big fans of 80 slashers here at Now This Nerd, but we watch them for different reasons than family horror films. Those tend to be more cerebral and psychological. They rely on disturbing imagery as opposed to just gore or straight up brutality. Slashers, on the other hand, are much more fun than frightening. We love to cheer on the killer as he tears through his prey, which are usually a gang of obnoxious teenage tropes. Slasher victims drink, they smoke, have premarital sex, they're mining bitcoins, they're, they're just generally assholes, which is why it's so damn entertaining to watch them get slaughtered by a maniac in a mask. Ted, hey Ted, where the hell's Parks grow? We're not worried about how poor Shelley Finkelstein's parents will react to the loss of their beloved son because the victims exist in a vacuum. If you want to terrify the audience rather than thrill them, you need protagonists that you can relate to. And what's more relatable than a family? Whether it's a father slumming as a caretaker in Colorado, a mother whose loving daughter is turning into a twisted blasphemy, or two parents trying to keep their kids safe during an alien apocalypse, family horror protagonists have struggles we can empathize with. Each member is more fleshed out than your average Freddy fodder, and it's much easier to see ourselves in their shoes, which makes it way more unsettling when shit hits the fan. We all have a family. Take a look at Banner, Michael! or know a family, and when bad things happen to them, it hits close to home. That brings us to point two. Families are safe. So many family horror movies are centered around the home, and the fear comes from seeing a traditional safe space invaded by unholy horrors. Look, you don't need a Skype call from Vincent D'Onofrio to tell you why haunted houses are scary. Named Bagul, the eater of children. Did you say eater? Yes. Uh, uh of children. We've all had moments where we went downstairs for a midnight snack, get maybe a string cheese, some pecan sandies, and then there's a flickering light or a creaking floorboard that convinces us that we're moments away from death. <laughs> Family horror takes that feeling and amps it up to ludicrous degrees. Luda! Luda! I mean, the Paranormal Activity series got six whole movies out of it. Home is supposed to be a haven, a place you can always return when the rest of the world becomes too much to handle. But if a hell gate opens up in the basement, or a bunch of dead kids start screening snuff films in the attic, it's a desecration of your most secure sanctum. And as frightening as it is to see horrors in the home, it's even scarier when it's coming from a family member. Ah! Ah! You know what she did? <laughs> your counting daughter! <laughs> the granddaddy of this trope is, of course, The Shining. The Torrances aren't exactly the Cleavers, but at the start, they're a loving family trying to work past Jack's alcoholism and history of abuse. Because he said, Wendy, I'm never gonna touch another drop, and if I do, you can leave me. And he didn't, and he hasn't had any alcohol in uh, five months. Traditionally, father figures have been portrayed as protectors, responsible for their family's safety, and seeing that role subverted can shake you to your foundations. Watching Jack take that drink from the ghostly bartender, in effect selling his soul, plunging him deeper into madness, is even more disturbing than his inevitable Axfield rampage. Here's Johnny! That's not to say that dads have all the fun, though. Dads, come on, dads have a lot of fun. <laughs> Horror movies have had plenty of murderous moms, too. Take the Babadook, where a mother's grief manifests as a sinister, sharp, snazzy dressed demon that almost makes her strangle her son. At least until she vomits up the devil inside her in a heartwarming, revolting display of love. Parents are put on this earth to protect their offspring, and the only thing scarier than seeing them threaten their terrified tots is a killer kid. 
Oh, Christ. Don't like that. That wasn't planned. Please cut. Family horror gets a lot of mileage out of creepy children. And Lord knows, the second I'm one-on-one -on -one with a kid, I'm terrified. Whether they're the spawn of Satan like Damien or Rosemary's baby. What have you done to its eyes? He has his father's eyes. Possessed by demons like Reagan or Carolyn from The Conjuring, or straight up mutant monsters like It's Alive, the juxtaposition of childhood innocence with unspeakable evil is maybe the most skin crawling sensation in all of cinema. My favorite example is Pet Cemetery. Lewis Creed had it all. He has a great job, a wife and kids, and he was best friends with Herman Monster. Congratulations. Scuba do and scuba die. That chicken's not too young to fry. <laughs> But after his son was smashed by a semi-truck, he gave into his grief and resurrected him as an adorable ankle-slashing killer. Even in the face of tragedy, his wife and daughter were still there for him, but his hubris destroyed it all in one horrible night. Lou introduced the unholy into his otherwise perfect family, and it costs him everything, which brings us to the last reason family horror is more frightening. Families are sacred. The idea of a traditional nuclear family is becoming more antiquated with each passing year. Where's my dinner? But certain tropes run deep in our cultural experience. And after millennia of evolution, our species has put the concept of family on a pedestal. It's embedded in our DNA, and it's deeply disturbing to see that perverted. One of my personal favorite scary tropes is the cannibal clan. You know the ones. They're a group of horrifying hillbillies who gather around the table for a nice feast of ugh, human flesh. The Sawyers in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre are undoubtedly the most famous example, even though their boy Leatherface gets all the glory. But he's only able to accomplish his dreams through the loving support of his crazy f***ing family. The Sawyers have had a huge influence on horror, from the fallout-ridden freaks of The Hills Have Eyes It's breakfast time! <laughs> to the Firefly Clan from House of a Thousand Corpses, who are actually kind of likable despite being crazy Rob Zombie serial killers. Please don't kill us, please don't kill us. Please don't kill us. Please don't kill us. Shut your mouth and get your shit in the box. You find yourself kind of laughing along with them, then being disgusted with yourself for empathizing with them. Freaky families aren't limited to film either. One of the most disturbing episodes of The X-Files was simply called Home, where Mulder and Scully investigate the Peacock Clan. The family is responsible for unspeakable crimes, but the reveal of Mama Peacock and everything it implies casts them in a horrifying new light. What we're witnessing, Scully, is undiluted animal behavior. Mankind, absent its own creation of civilization, technology, and information, regressed to an almost prehistoric state. Through inbreeding and insanity, they've reverted to their base animal instincts and devolved into a feral family that makes a mockery of the values we supposedly hold so dear. Now we have to move on. Start a new family, one we'll be proud of. Find a new place to call ours, a new home. Zombie redneck torture families, to quote my favorite, Cabin in the Woods, are disturbing because they're the polar opposite of the stereotypical ideal. It's borderline blasphemy as opposed to the witch, which is actual blasphemy. After a witch uses their newborn for exfoliant, Thomason's family begins a slow descent into satanic madness with some of the most shocking imagery I've ever seen in a film. You'll never look at apples the same way again I can guarantee it. The witch is a shocking perversion of family and faith. And if you don't believe me, just ask Black Phillip. He's a goat. Black Phillip, Black Phillip, to Johnny Queen is wedding. He's a goat. He's also the devil. He's also the devil. What's that like to live deliciously? Yes. By the end, Thomason is the only one left standing, and she leaves her old life behind to join the unholy coven that promises her far more than her family ever could. Even without the supernatural, it's extremely unsettling to see family bonds brutally broken. 
like in Funny Games, where two parents and their son are held hostage by two house guests who stop by to borrow eggs. You had a dozen, you're going shopping on Monday anyway. We just want the eggs, that's all. I learned this from growing up in the Bronx. Rule number one, don't let anybody come into your house and borrow anything, especially eggs. You better be careful, old man, or I'll break your eggs. <laughs> now please leave. Mr. Farber. What? They're forced to engage in horrific violence against each other, completely powerless in their comfy Long Island home. Bronx rule number two, don't ever find yourself in Long Island. The name of this game is whether by knife or whether by gun, losing your life can sometimes be fun. It's a shock to see a family so completely debased and demolished, especially without any demons and spooky ghosts. Does anyone want anything? It reminds us that even the most precious of bonds can be shattered in a literal instant. And I don't know about you, but that's pretty f***ing terrifying. Throughout the history of horror cinema, the family has existed as an ideal to twist and tear down foundations meant to be broken. And Hereditary mixes all of the classic family horror tropes into one sinister brew. It's a realistic portrayal of a mother dealing with loss. It's a subversion of the safety and security a family offers. And to top it all off, it's got a creepy fucking kid. You can have your mass maniacs and movie monsters, but for me, when it comes to scares, I like to keep it in the family. Thanks for watching, everybody. This was a particularly creepy video to make, but I'm not done yet. I wanna know what your favorite family horror movie is. Is it Insidious, Last House on the Left, or fuck a movie, is it just somebody coming to borrow your eggs? Let me know in the comments, follow us on Twitter at NowNerdOfficial, and please subscribe to Now This Nerd.